All right. Um, unit four. It's on decision analysis, and our primary uh, example is the Thomson Lumber Company. And uh, if you can see, um, the problem I suppose would be to make a decision on the expansion plans. All right. So um, step one is the this to define the problem, and step two, we are listing the alternatives, and there are three of them. Uh, there is the large plant, and there's the small plant, and uh, there's no plant or do nothing. All right. Now the possible outcomes, or I guess uh, possible conditions, could be either the market would be favorable or unfavorable. Okay. Um, and um, once we identify the uh, conditional values. Um, then we can select the decision model that would be steps four and five, and then we apply a model to the data. Okay, and that's where you implement the plan. So let's take a look at the numbers uh, for Thomson Lumber Company. Uh, if we construct our large plant and the market is favorable, we stand to make two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, if we build a small plant, we only stand to make a hundred thousand. Okay, and if we do nothing, of course, we make nothing. All right. Now, also, if we um, do this in the unfavorable market, okay, if we construct a large plant, we stand to lose $180,000. Uh, construct a small plant in unfavorable market, we stand to lose $20,000. And if we do nothing in a bad economy, we stand to lose nothing. Okay, so there's a trade off. Now, there are three conditions under which we make these decisions. Okay, that would be uh, the type one is we know with certainty what's going to happen, which makes the decision very easy. Um, type two is we have no idea what the market is going to be like, which I think apply to most of us in most cases. And type three would be knowing some. Uh, or actually knowing the probabilities of each. Okay, so you have some idea. Now, right now we're talking about decision making under uncertainty. Okay, you have no idea what's going to happen at all. All right, and there are several different criteria to uh, do these kind of um, uh, decision making. Okay, the first one is what we call the maximax. Okay, which is optimistic. All right. Number two would be maximin, which is pessimistic. All right. And uh, option three, criterion of realism, we make guesses. Okay. And criterion number four, equally likely, we think everything is going to be equally likely, 50-50, uh, in our example. And number five, minimax regret. Okay. We want to just stand lose the least. Okay, if there's a lot of money to be made. Okay, so let's take a look at numbers and see what each one is. Max and max is best of the best case scenario. Okay, which means that we take a look at every situation and we look at the best numbers we can get. So for a large plant, uh, the best case scenario, of course, is make two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and for small plants, the best case scenario, we make a hundred thousand dollars, and do nothing, we stand to make nothing. So, the best case scenario among the th three alternatives, of course, would be construct a large plant, which gives us the maximum benefits of two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so under Maximax, our decision would be to construct a large plant. Maximin is the next one. Maximin would be best of the worst case scenario. Okay, so we, instead of looking at the best case scenario, we look at the worst case scenario. Okay, so a large plant would lose $180,000. A small plant would lose $20,000. And do nothing, we will lose nothing. Okay, so among the worst case scenarios, 
we would choose do nothing because that would be the best of the three worst case scenarios. That's the one that we would lose the least. Okay, or the best of the worst case scenarios. So under maximum, our decision would be to do nothing. Criterion of realism is the next one. It is a weighted average, which means that we kind of give every possibility um, different weights. Okay, so for example, and we'll look at the numbers. Let's say we think that it is 80% going to be favorable, okay, and 20% unfavorable, and that's our guess. So we apply 80% to the $200,000, 20% to losing $180,000, and our realism would be $124,000. Now, if for small plants, if we apply the same guesses, so 80% to $100,000, 20% lose $20,000. So we add those two together, it would be $76,000. And if we do nothing, 80% 80 80 of nothing plus 20% of nothing is still nothing. So among the three different alternatives, for this guess that we are applying, the best number would be to construct a large plant because we would get $124,000 based on our guesses of 80% favorable and 20% unfavorable. Equally likely is similar to the Hurwitz, which was the last one that we talked about. But instead of giving different weights to different uh, conditions, we think everything is going to be equally likely. So instead of 80-20, we're going to apply 50-50 to each market. So for large plants, we think it's going to be 50% favorable, 50% unfavorable, and the end result is $10,000. For small plants, 50% favorable for $100,000 and 50% unfavorable for minus $20,000 gives us $40,000. And for doing nothing, okay, 0, 50%, and 0, 50% gives us 0. So among the three numbers, the best number would be to construct a small plant in this situation because we'll end up with $40,000, which is the most of the three. The last one is, is what we call the minimax regret. Minimax regret is what we stand to lose. Or another word to say it would be penalty for not being optimistic. So the way that we're going to look at this is we look, we're going to look at what we call the opportunity loss tables. Okay? And we look at the best case scenario and worst case scenario for each situation. So for example, if we decide to go big with the large plants and the market is favorable, we make our maximum $200,000, we have no regrets because we made the money that we expect to make. Now for a s small plant, if the market is indeed favorable, we could have gone large, but we only did small, we stand to lose out on $100,000. And of course, if we do nothing and the market was good, we stand to lose out on $200,000. Now, in an unfavorable market, things look a little different. 
unfavorable market, the best case scenario would be to do nothing. So if we build a large plant and lose out lose hundred and eighty thousand dollars, then our opportunity loss would be hundred and eighty thousand dollars because we made the wrong decision to build large. If the market is bad and we build small, we lose out on twenty thousand dollars because we went ahead and made a decision to build in a bad market and we lost twenty thousand dollars that we otherwise wouldn't have. And of course in a bad market and you did nothing, you don't lose anything, so you didn't there's no regrets. So what you see here underneath would be the numbers that we just talked about. This is what we call the opportunity loss table. Okay, for each alternative, we looked at the opportunity loss for favorable market and unfavorable unfavorable markets. Okay, so if we take the opportunity loss, the largest of each one, if we construct a large plant, we could lose up to $180,000 in, in minimax regret. In small plants, favorable market, we may regretfully lose on $100,000 or $20,000 in an unfavorable market. Okay, so the worst that we can lose out on would be $100,000 for the small plant. Now doing nothing in a good market we can stand to lose $200,000 or lose out on $200,000. Okay, so the maximum we could lose out by doing nothing is $200,000. So among the three alternatives that we could lose out money on, the one that we would risk the least would be a small plant. Because if we construct a small plant in a good market, we may lose out on $100,000. In a bad market, we may lose out on $20,000. However, we are not going to be standing out to lose the most between large and doing nothing. Okay, If you build large plants, you can stand to lose more. If you do nothing, you can also stand to lose more. So construct a small plant, in another word, is a conservative decision. Now we're talking about decision making under risk. So now we have some idea of what the probabilities are for each of the conditions. And what we can do, for example, is if we know now that each market has a probability of 50% of happening, okay, then what we can do is we can apply the 50% to each of the amount we think we're going to make or lose. Okay, so for example, if we apply that to building a large plant, Okay, now we know that 50% we will make $200,000, 50% we will lose $180,000. So what we can expect to make, expect monetary value or EMV is $10,000. For the small plant, it will be the same thing, 50% applied to $100,000 in a good market, and 50% applied to losing $20,000 in a poor market. So we can expect to make $40,000. And doing nothing, 50% uh, of good market times zero and 50% of poor market times zero still gives us zero. So among the three alternatives, we can expect to make the most by building a small plant.
and here's the table that illustrates that okay we calculate the EMV okay for each of the alternatives under different uh, market conditions and finally we talk about expected value of perfect information and this is the difference between what we expect to make the EMV and under perfect condition and perfect guesses I suppose if you have an astrologer or someone who predicts the future who can give you insider information of some kind to tell you what's going to happen okay that would be perfect information the amount the difference between those two amounts okay what you can expect to make and what you can make under the best conditions the difference between these two amounts is what we call the expected value of perfect information and why would you need to know this well you would need to know this for example if you consider using a consultant okay the consultant is supposed to help you to make more than what you expect to make otherwise and you need to find out what is a reasonable amount of money to pay for the consultants because if the consultants charge you more than what the perfect information can give you then you're going to be losing money even if the consultants give you perfect information because you're going to be paying more than what you can expect to make so for example if a consultant company consulting company is offering the service for sixty five thousand dollars is this worth purchasing the information well we'll see in the perfect scenario we would make two hundred thousand dollars fifty percent of the time in a good market and in a bad market we do nothing so in a perfect condition we can expect to make a hundred thousand dollars this is taking the best of the best or knowing when it's going to be good and also best of the worst knowing when it's going to be bad if you take the best of the two conditions the most you can make even with that with that perfect information is a hundred thousand dollars now we calculated that on the average DMV is forty thousand dollars which means that the difference between the two is a, is the difference of sixty thousand dollars which means that that is the amount of room you have to improve on what you can make expectedly so if the consulting company is asking for $65,000 that would be more than what you can earn even under the best conditions which means that you should not go for the offer so the maximum that Thompson should pay for the additional information is $60,000 so $65,000 is too much <laughs>